Zoom. We will record this here for y'all. Now, again, as I mentioned, this session is all about your Q&A. So uh, any questions that you might have, whether it has to do with any of our past webinars that we ran through, and you might just need some additional information or guidance on something. Um, and I can guarantee you guys, if you have a question that you're pondering or just kind of curious about, uh, you're le you're, there's going to be somebody else in here that's likely going to have or it has a similar question or is going to benefit from it really at the end of the day. Now you guys can use the chat as well as the Q&A to ask your questions uh, in here. And so while we're waiting for those questions to kind of pump in here for us to kind of review, I just wanted to showcase some of the, the updates that were just recently released. So these updates, um, they released on the 15th, so yesterday, so they're brand new. Uh, some of them are applicable to everyone and some of them are board specific. Um, so with one of the updates now for you guys with the filters, uh, you now have the ability when you wanted to pull up a lead that is viewed a property three or more times. So if that happens, typically in your system, you should be getting a notification, an email letting you know that your lead, Crystal, uh, viewed this property three times. Um, now you guys are busy, you get a lot of emails. Sometimes they don't always land in your inbox or they go into, you know, or you overlook them. Um, and so when you jump into your system, you wanna be able to easily locate those people so that you can follow up with them or action them according to their behavior. So when you're adding the filter item for this one, you're simply going to go into, and you can just start typing view, and it's going to have this filter, the lead viewed property three or more times. Um, so previously, when we use this filter, it would just pull everyone that is viewed a property three or more times, but there was no indication as to when that behavior actually occurred. So now in this far right corner or column here, you now have the ability to specify exactly when that occurred. So if you're in your system today or on Friday or whenever, and you want to pull up leads from this week that have looked at a listing three or more times, or even anyone today that may have looked at a listing three or more times, you're going to be able to locate those leads a lot simpler. Uh, and then when you click on the lead here, if we go into the more details, you're gonna see that this lead looked at this property four times, right? So it's triggering that filter. So that's one of the updates, uh, super excited about that. It's gonna help you guys uh, with the engagement in the leads. Cause again, with here, you have that ability to select the listings, right? So if we see that they viewed this property four times, that could very well indicate some level of interest, right? So we can send them in the listing again as an SMS with a personalized note, or again, you can write a personalized note right here, uh, trying to get that lead to engage with you, whether they want to start seeing more listings just like that one, um, or perhaps it would benefit from some additional information. I like this one when you're sending an individual uh, listing, because when it sends them the lead, the email, it's, it's like a feature sheet for that specific property. So it's really showcasing that one listing when you're sending it to them by email. Um, so that's, the, uh, that's one of the updates that you guys are gonna see in the system. Uh, another update that you guys are going to see, and this is applicable to everyone, is the CCing of a, of a lead. So if we're sending, let's say this lead an email and we wanted to CC somebody on that email, whether it's some, someone related to that lead or perhaps one of your uh, business, business associates that you want included on the communication. So now when you're sending out that email, so we have the outgoing, you're gonna be able to sync. No, nope, that's not the one I, I CC'd on. So it was this one. Uh, so this one here, you can see I CC'd um, myself essentially on this email and I did reply to it. So when I replied to that email, uh, the reply in the system is also including those who were reply because I just did reply all. So anyone that was reply all was uh, added to the CC. And if I go and actually reply as the agent to this email that I just received, uh, the people that were originally CC'd are also going to be included. So you don't have to re-add them in. They're just naturally included because they were originally replied or included on the original thread. 
Um, you can, of course, remove people if you don't want them uh, included on the responses. So that's another filter that, um, that has changed uh, for you guys to benefit when you are communicating with, with everyone. Um, the other is campaigns. So with the campaigns, you guys have the ability to create tasks. Right, so when we go over to the campaigns section over here, uh, some, some individuals like to create campaigns that are just tasks. So they're like more like an action plan. Um, but often enough, those action plans have specific individuals, um, whether they're like a specific user uh, in your system that should be assigned that task, or perhaps they have a specific holder on that lead. So what I mean by that is on each of your leads, We'll just kind of quickly jump in. Each of your leads at the bottom, you always have the main agent. You can specify a listing agent and you can specify a mortgage agent. Uh, so now with the campaigns, when you're creating tasks, uh, previously you had to specify what person, not a specific lead holder. So now you can actually specify a lead holder because in if you have a large scale team, sometimes those are always changing. Right, so you want, instead of having multiple campaigns, one campaign for Crystal, one campaign for Brana, this, you know, and so on, you can now just use it by the lead holder type. So I will just go right ahead and edit this one. So when you are creating it, just as an example, you would just add the task in here. And so when you're assigning it, so who this task is assigned to, whether it's the main agent, the lead, you know, the, the main lead holder, the listing agent or the mortgage agent. So if you have a team, as an example, and we want the listing agent, this is the person that's supposed to act in this task, then they, regardless of who it is, it could be myself, it could be Brana, it could be anyone else that was assigned that role for any specific lead, that task would automatically get assigned to whoever the specified listing agent is. Um, and of course, you still have the ability to specify if it's someone specifically in your system that you want that task assigned for. Um, so that's one of the, the updates as well. Um, what else do we have for you guys? So we do have the type head on the filters. So this one is, is minor, but definitely beneficial for many of you. So when it comes to your safe searches uh, with these uh, filter items here, you now um, have the ability to type you know, up to three letters and the system's gonna automatically produce which filter you're probably trying to pull. Um, so previously you could do the first letter, right? So if I keep typing F, you're gonna keep getting anything that starts with an F. Um, but let's say I wanted to do polygon. Uh, so you can see polygon and postal code are right next to each other. So if I just start typing P-O-L, um, it's gonna automatically produce me the polygon filter. Right, or if I wanted to do uh, washrooms, it's going to automatically do that, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So once you're more a little more familiar with the, the names of the filters within the system, it's going to be a lot faster for you to pull them up to apply to those leads. Um, any questions so far about what I've just reviewed? And um, and then for those of you that have just joined us. Uh, what, what we're doing right now is I'm just showcasing some of the updates that, that were released yesterday um, in the system. But today's session is an open Q&A session. So use the chat, use the Q&A and ask your questions. Okay, so, um, so the, final, the final update that we have is for TREB users. So the Toronto Real Estate Board um, or any you know, surrounding board. So if you're like Durham Board, you're, you're still TREB um, essentially. <clears throat> We now have the ability for you guys to have commercial listings. So that's a big one. That's been years. I think since I started here seven plus years ago, that has been something that our leads or clients have been looking for. Um, and more recently, it's just become you know, a greater demand for it. So we decided that we would actually implement it. Um, so it's quite exciting for any of you. So when you go onto your website, if you have a TREB website, you can now see that there is a commercial option as far as the type of property. Um, you can select to showcase all of those commercial properties, or you can, of course, specify exactly what commercial properties you want to be viewing on here. Um, so that's an added bonus. Uh, the leads that do sign up will get automatically placed on searches, you know, reflective of the type of commercial property they're looking at. 
you do also have the ability in the searches in your back end to also filter by commercial. So for this one, you would do the subtype and it's basically any, you know, it's going to be mixed in here, for example, but you can pick industrial, for example. So if I wanted, I don't know if anything's going to exist, um, industrial units that way. So there's two listings that are industrial in the Toronto area that are listed within that, that price point. So um, that's an exciting feature for you guys that also working in commercial as well, because you're now going to be able to monitor those clients or leads that you may be generating with respect to commercial uh, units or businesses or whatever it may be, uh, to be able to action them and convert them and, and monitor those activities a lot more effectively. Um, so that's, that is the final updates for this past release. Um, if you guys have any questions as to how those, those work, you can definitely ask them now. Um, you can also talk to our support team about that as well. So if there's anything you're just not sure about, uh, our support team can definitely assist with that as well. Um, but yeah, you guys are a pretty quiet group. But I don't think I've had a, a quiet group as you guys uh, with respect to your questions. So does anyone have a question in here as to how do you go about doing something in the CRM system? Again, it could be your CRM related. It could be the website related. Um, it could be just to do with your leads in general. Um, so how can we use the commercial site on the search CRM? So what do you mean about, I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean by that commercial side on the search CRM. If you want to, you know, perhaps clarify what you mean by that question. Now you guys can, if you have the commercial listings and let's say you have an automated uh, branded website or even your lead gen sites, you can create listing pages. So if you wanted to create a, a page that's just commercial listings, you can definitely do that. Uh, to make it easier for individuals, you can break it down into different uh, commercial categories, of course, as well. So that's something that you can, you can definitely do. Okay, so if you make a lead and then I want to email them a listing. Okay, perfect. So kind of creating a brand new lead. So when you add any lead in here, you can just go up in the top right hand corner and you can add them as a lead, right? So you can add them as a lead there. Um, so let me just create one. So test commercial. And I'll just do this. And I've got to create an email that has not been used before. And then there's my cursor, dark by Z. All right. So once I've done that, I can save it. Okay, so I have the lead. You can, um, so basically when you're adding a lead in your system and you have the commercial, um, or they're, you're just adding them in. They don't have an account on your website yet because they've never been to your website yet. So you can send them an activation email. It's basically that same email that your leads are getting when they first sign up, right? So account activation email gives them a link to the website as well as a link to validate their email address should they, should they wish to do so. So you can choose to do that or not. It's entirely up to you. And then you just simply add a new lead gen user. Okay, so once you add the new lead gen user, you now have the ability to create a search. So whether you're adding a search, you can do active, you can do sold, um, and then you're just building it out, right? So again, you would do your subtype to whatever it is, uh, you know, whatever kind of commercial property. So let's just use industrial again. Um, you can of course specify the price range, you can do the polygon, as well, so if I go the poly, the polygon with your map, we can showcase. So if we wanted industrial, let's say anywhere in this area, so polygon, you're just dropping markers on the map to draw your polygon. So let's say I just kind of, I want this, you know, unique, unique area that I'm looking in. Just go over there, and then you just apply, you apply your filters. You'll see it there. And then when you apply it, you'll see any listings that match that criteria. And of course you can continue to add on to it. And then you would just save that. So I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna 
call this. So whenever you're creating a new search, you're going to give it a name. Uh, the name is for your reference only. The lead will never see it. Okay. It's just so you know, if you have multiple searches on someone, you can identify which search is which. Um, so I'm just going to call this testing commercial again. And I'm going to save it. And then we have the ability to see here, we can see that there is the testing commercial. Right, and you can continue. So you can add more. So maybe they're looking for an industrial unit in Bonn, and then they need a retail unit in Oshawa, for example. So you can have you know multiple different searches that way. Perfecto. Um, Sabrina is asking, are there any pre-construction filters coming? I know it is. I don't know if it's in the works. Um, I know it's been a big ask. Uh, for our team, especially with the automated systems, to be able to have pages where you guys can add uh, commercial or sorry, uh, pre construction properties. Um, so I believe that it is something of importance um, for our team. Um, as far as those pre construction properties and et cetera, um, being able to um, auto load into your website, that's something that. <laughs> is uh, a tremendous job, but it's also us getting the information directly from the builders as well um, and knowing when they are pre-construction, right? So it's, it's, it's probably somebody's full-time job just to stay on top of pre-construction to see which developments are coming, which ones are now selling, um, you know, things like that. So it is something that if any of you have information as to where that information can be easily sourced, from uh, for us to add in, then we would definitely uh, benefit and, and appreciate it because it would, it would assist us nonetheless. And even better if you know any of like direct feeds of those, those listing types, uh, the pre-construction development and, and what have you. Um, but until then, nothing. Um, if you're looking, so as far as filters or searches on sites, again, you don't have that ability to add it into the automated sites just yet. And of course, because of that, there's not going to be any filters within your CRM system um, that are identifying those individuals. Uh, to identify that specific individual, that's where you would want to add your tags for yourself. So being able to just tag them. So many of you are going to have your tags in the CRM system, so you can create, I don't think there is one for pre-construction, but you can definitely add a pre-construction tag to your leads or into your system. And then that way, when you ever need to pull up anyone that's interested in pre-construction, uh, you'd be able to do so within seconds. Um, but you all will be the first to know when there is the ability to add the pre-construction to the websites, because I think that will be a hit once, once that does finally get released. Um, so with respect to the commercial, he's asking, can we narrow down the search? Like I only want to send them a gas station. Uh, you might be able to, it would be more or less through the remarks if I had to guess. So if I take this off, for example, and it would be the, so I guess I should have just left it subtype of, and with, that would probably be a business, right? A sale of business. Um, feel like I am sale of business. There we go. And then you might be able to do it with respect to the keywords. Um, so it could be the remarks. No, keywords. Okay. So like gas, let's just, let's just do gas. And I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to apply the filter. So that is not just gas. Well, that's a gas station. Um, so I wonder if we use a keyword gas station. Uh, filter. So you can use the keywords like that. So now we've got these gas stations, uh, but the keywords are what's in the remarks section, right? So, um, so for this one here, I don't know if it's a gas station. Um, it could have something that in the write-up is indicating something where it's uh, close to a gas station, right? So there you have the SO gas station. So that's uh, what that one is pulling, but that may be your, your, your best bet of refining these searches is by using the keywords like gas station uh, to be able to do so. And our keywords are here, yeah, perfect. 
Perfect, perfect. A lot to hear. All right, any additional questions? I just gotta speak up. Can't read your minds. <laughs> As I said, you guys, if you have a question, I guarantee somebody else also has that question with respect to anything that is in your system. Now, again, you guys, when you're working your leads, what I, I always push on all of you. And the most common, you know, when I'm getting individuals that they can't seem to be gaining the conversions in their system. I mean, a lot of it comes down to tracking of data. Um, the most of the, the largest culprit is not logging, right? So we all have a little bit of laziness in us and or we're just really busy. Um, and we're just trying to do things quickly. Um, however, when we don't log everything, you know, taking that additional step to log a call that we didn't actually connect with the lead is, is causing more harm than spending that, that split second to just log it. Um, so understanding where your actions are when they last occurred, do you know when to do them again? Okay, so most individuals, not all I'm gonna say, but many individuals um, that aren't finding success in their platform, they're not logging, okay? Um, they'll say, oh no, I've called everyone, but it looks like no one's ever been called. Um, so that's important. We all sit in here and I can guarantee each one of you watch and monitor your leads and all their behaviors and activities. We need to do the same for ourselves. It's only going to help us. Um, and then, you know, from there, even though some will make notes, of course, it's leaving detailed notes for yourself, right? It's leaving, I, how I kind of put it or encourage it is leave your call notes as if you're anticipating your colleague doing the follow-up for you. Um, you're leaving them what they need to have a solid follow-up. They can pick up right where you last left off and not sound like they just got thrown into the dark. Here, call this person. I have no idea who you are or what your situation is. So leaving those detailed notes will definitely make your follow-ups that much more stronger. Um, and you're able to refer back to that past conversation. Right. So, um, you know, hey, how are you doing? You know, last time you spoke, I know you guys were just in the middle of doing some basement renovations. How that how's that coming along? I know you guys were, you know, struggling getting some, you know, hardwood or something like that. Right. The small notes and the key, you know, things that you think are minor um, actually can be a big deal. Uh, it allows for that individual to recognize that you are actively listening in that conversation. Right, that, that you actually care enough to remember that and they actually feel like a person, not just another number. Um, so those follow-ups, you know, you know, the, the keynotes are gonna, gonna really help you with that. Um, and then again, just treating as a conversation, like relax, we're not focused on the outcome. We just wanna spark up conversation with all these people. And we've got a list of friends, new friendships, right? So it, it takes the pressure off yourself. I mean, it also takes a ton of pressure off that lead and you're gonna find that they open up to you, right? And in lamest terms, how I kind of do it is you're shooting the shit with, shooting shit with your leads. Um, it's casual, you're talking about real estate, you're info grabbing, and you are basically creating a good foundation for those follow-ups, right? Um, and then really it's the follow-ups where you're gonna gain the momentum to the conversion. Right. The initial conversation we're, <clears throat> we're having is often breaking the ice. We're learning a little bit more, but where you're going to gain the success is in your follow up in your follow through. <clears throat> and then if you're saying you're going to call them in a month, you know, following through on that and actually giving them a call in a month. Right. So um, it's, it's all of that where the leads start to see your dedication, even though you're not in any kind of position yet to receive any kind of uh, paycheck with respect to their move or anything like that. Um, so how can I remove all campaigns? I have this Facebook ad where the ad is about 3 million assignment, but when they sign up, they get a message that may be looking at 500 account homes. We want them to have a different message, etc. Um, so it really depends on your system and how it's set up. So your name is a, you're coming in as an anonymous attendee. So I can't even check out your, your system. So there's a couple of things that you can look for. Okay, so what that sounds like uh, to me 
is that you may have, so if I go into user preferences here, so if you go up here, go to your user preferences. If that message is going out to all your leads, check down here to your lead welcome campaign and make sure it's nothing selected. Okay, so we want this to be nothing selected um, and then save it. Okay, so that's one thing to look for that, you know, that to me kind of indicates that that might be the culprit right there. Um, the other is when you're in the campaigns, as you're scrolling through, you'll be able to see this. Okay, so auto assign leads from. Um, so this means that this campaign is being automatically assigned to any lead that is a home buyer. So that's one way of figuring out which campaigns are being used on those leads. Um, and so it may just be a configuration set up in the back end uh, that you might need to, to look, in, look into. But check that space first. Um, and then you can definitely build out a campaign. So, um, you know, if somebody's signing up on Facebook, it, it's, you can send them the listings, of course. Um, but also you can add them to a campaign, right, with the SMS. Hey, thanks for signing up to receive uh, assignment sales and wherever. You should have these in your inbox. Right. Let me know if you have any problem viewing them, um, you know, whatever it is, you can have the plan action or however long you want it to be, whether it's, you know, just trying to get in connection with that, you know, in contact with that lead, or if you want it to be a combination of just getting in contact with the lead in the first place, um, but maybe some, you know, additional information about how assignment sales work, you know, what is the benefits, things like that because these people have signed up on your website or on Facebook to get that information that if you know with the listings essentially they may value that little additional tidbits of information that you may have regarding assignment sales. Righty. Coming in here and if you guys anyone that's in here don't see all these campaigns aside from this one of course um you guys should have multiple campaigns in your system um so if you're not seeing multiple campaigns in your system uh just reach out to support and we can simply add them in there for you um same with all the filters and tags you guys should have all of those in there um and if you don't then uh we can definitely add them in uh you know it's one less step for you to start staying organized um you know having to go in and manually add things in uh, but the campaigns are definitely beneficial for you guys uh, to help with your follow-up, as mentioned, uh, last time we did one where it was like the buyer app link. Um, this one here is now what is being assigned to all the new leads. So anyone that's new that's signing, signed up, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the campaign that your leads are going to be going on. It's a longer action plan. Um, it, is, it goes for about nine months. Um, but there's only 11 actions so you can see it assigns this to a campaign so um, it's not like you're sitting there hounding the person every two days with a text message or anything like that they're very spaced out so it's like one week and then two weeks another text message goes out and then three weeks another text message goes out and then it comes back to one week um, so it seems more realistic um, like the realistic behavior that you might be doing if you were doing this manually and of course the campaign will automatically stop if the lead makes contact so if they reply to one of those text messages or if they um um yeah if they reply to one of those one of those text messages or you talk to them i should say so as long as that pipeline moves to made contact or beyond uh the campaign just stops so you're not sending out those additional messages uh this campaign the text messages that are being used the additional ones are the same text messages, or some of them, I should say, not all of them, uh, some of those text messages that our ISA team is using uh, to help engage with leads. So they're manually sending these out to leads. They're not using campaigns, but they're finding that these are some of the text messages that are re receiving the highest response rate, meaning the leads are actually replying to them. Um, so we have that in there. And again, you can use it as is. You can also tweak it. So if you wanted to use it on older leads that still haven't made contact with them, you can just tweak it, remove the first few actions, and then you know adjust it kind of going from there. Um, Sabrina is saying, when you're in your lead, it's very difficult when assigning a campaign. It's hard to know what the campaign is that you're assigning. 
Um, it can be, and I, I hear you on that one, Sabrina, because uh, especially with this one, like the new buyer, if they're a long campaign name, uh, when you go to assign it, you can't fully read what it is, right? So some of them you can see what it is, right? So you can see exactly what it is. But then, for example, this one here, um, I can't see if it's this is the with sold or without sold, right? So I have to almost guess and then click it and then do it. One thing that you can do for yourselves is you don't have to use the title that we have used for these campaigns. You can change it, okay? So you know in your system what that campaign is. So if you go into your campaign and you simply just edit this one, for example, you can change what this says. It doesn't have to be this title, right? So you can shorten it so it's easy to identify and then you can just simply, it'll be easier for you to apply it that way. Yeah, so once you change it, you just go down here and just go update, right? Um, but yeah, that's, that's one way so that you know exactly uh, what is what, for, especially for those longer ones that you may, may need to utilize and so on. Right. Oh, that was interesting. Who's on here with me? I just popped on. I didn't know it was going to interrupt. <laughs> Sorry. I got the doorbell sign. So I was like, what happened? Who's in here? Um, awesome. We're doing open Q&A session today, Brana. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. So with your experience in the trainings, as you do a lot of trainings, what is one of the, the common questions uh, for these leads, your clients that you're training, uh, that you're finding is popping up a lot when they're when they're asking questions on how do I do this or how to do that? Um, is there anything that kind of sticks out for you? Um, mostly, um, you know, people are concerned about, you know, when they first contact the lead. You know, mm -hmm. should they call them like right when the lead registers and, and they get panicked because they think that, sorry for the barking in the background. Um, they think that um, they should call them like instantly. And if they're in the middle of a meeting with another client or something like that, they can't do that. Mm -hmm. So um, I tell them usually within the first 24 hours, you want to be calling. You don't need to worry mm -hmm. about calling right there at that moment because to some people, when they get those types of phone calls right after somebody's registered, I don't know about you, but it can be a little creepy, you know, like, it, yeah, or you're, <laughs> you weren't expecting a call in some cases, or right. you don't want to call. I don't answer. So I'm a good example. So yesterday or the day before I signed up on a, on a, one of those silly mortgage rate mm -hmm. websites, right. Just to see what the rates were. Mm -hmm. And of course I'm getting call and man, this lady was persistent. Oh, wow. Like it was just like, I'm silencing the phone. You're getting right to my voice now. She called me so many times. I was like, wow. Um, you know, and yes, I'm sure a lot of people do answer. Um, I know how these systems work. I'm not ready to talk to you. I just wanted some information, yeah. um, you know, and what have you. So, you know, if things change and I need to, I know now know where I need to go, but I just really wanted to ask this, you know, I just wanted to see what the rates were um, really is all it came down to. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have an intention of actually signing on with any mortgages. So at the same time, I don't want to, you know, be wasting her time, so to speak. And, and right. that's how you might think that your leads are doing. Um, but at the same time, she's just doing her job and she's probably trying to find out a little bit more information about myself. So even though I might not be looking for a mortgage right now, she wants to know when likely when my mortgage would be up for renewal. Right. Exactly. So she would know how to follow up with me. Exactly. Um, so it's, you know, she, she didn't call like instantly. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to guess it was 30 minutes to an hour and a half later mm -hmm. that she did call, but she called then like every 30 minutes for, and then an hour, like it was just a lot of calls. So I was like, yeah, Holy it was a little and I much. wouldn't do that. Yeah. yeah. Like I would, I would have to say to agents, I wouldn't leave it more than 
the most that I would leave it to call somebody right from the very first phone call would be 48 hours, the max. Yeah. I wouldn't even try to push the 24 hour mark. And the reason I say that is because, you know, as we say to them on a regular basis, people are not just registering on one website, they're registering on multiple websites. So that said, they're going to be getting contacted by multiple real estate agents. And if they are at that point where they truly want information or are ready for information, and you don't call them for a week or two later because you're letting them just do their thing or look at listings or see if they come back to the website and you don't, and you wait, you don't call them at all. You could have potentially lost that sale because If they're ready and they're registering, some other agent is calling them and now gets them on the phone and that's who they're going to speak to. Yeah, it's, it's, um, and everyone has, and and how I like to tell people, there's no right or wrong way of working your leads, right? So it's really finding the jive that works best for you, how you want to run your business Mm -hmm. and what you're most comfortable and what, what, if it's working, then don't change it. Right. So, um, you know, kind of what you're saying, you know, as long as it's within the 24 hours, I just say it your earliest and best opportunity. Exactly. So it's, you know, you don't have to rush to get to the phone to call your leads. It uh, that's why you have SMS messaging. Right. So it's going to try to make that attempt at making contact with that lead in those situations where you may not be able to pick up a phone, but you can simply reply to a text should they be responsive to you. Um, So it makes things a little bit easy, easier Mm -hmm. that way. Um, Sabrina says that she gives them a week to look over the listings. Now, Sabrina, this is a quick question for you on that one. So to look at the listings, what are you doing then in a situation where because it happens and I'm sure you can all agree that it happens in your systems as well, is when a lead signs up, and then they don't come back and they're not looking at listings. What are you doing with those leads? Are you still calling them? You're still giving them that one week? Um, or are you waiting till they're active? She wink. So, so Sabrina, what I would be doing with those leads is just follow a one week rule. So just call them, right? So they may never become active. Those emails could be going into a promotions folder it happens on me as you see how many listing emails i have in my promotions folder which on google um my gmail account um i never check that folder ever like i don't i like i know it's more or less you know websites trying to sell me stuff for the most part um so i never check it so if we don't try to make a connection with them um they may never be active and you paid for that lead right so do try to call them. I would do the same process that we, we would with the others um, and not just waiting to somebody's active uh, to do that because there could be a reason behind why they're not active. And unless we have a conversation with them, uh, we're never going to know. We're just assuming um, that they're not interested or whatever it might be. Um, yes, some individuals are a little bit more you know, comfortable calling people that are active. Um, but again, if you're not calling leads, somebody else is. Right, so you could have a lot of uh, miss ends in there for those individuals. Um, and again, those they may not even realize that the emails are being sent and they're going to this folder that they can't even see them. Um, and so, you know, you might be doing them a favor, and then all of a sudden you have that conversation, and boom, they just start being active because they've now marked it as safe and it's going into their inbox. Um, so every every email a system is slightly different, like. I still can't wrap my head around stuff. I have Google or Gmail that will mark internal emails that I'm replying to or sending as possible spam. And I'm like, this legitimately came from me, sent it to my colleague who sent it back. And now you're, you're flagging as possible. You know, this looks like it might be suspicious, um, which is kind of comical. Um, so, and that's just Google. I can imagine all the other ones are, or can be quite, uh, similar as well. Now, oops, didn't mean to click on that one. Uh, just going into your Q&A. Um, so question about support. Are they helpful as my Google leads managed by Agent Loki team at one point is getting three leads a month with a total budget of 250 spend on it. So you're only getting three leads a month. Um, were you doing seller leads or buyer leads? 
pre-construction leads. What kind of leads were you doing? Buy a lead. So buy a lead. So if you're getting three leads a month with a budget of 250, something funky is going on. Okay. So as long as you've brought it to the attention of our support team, they're going to look into that. Now, the only time where something like that might seem normal is if you are targeting an area that is like not uh, like a very, very rural area where the population is quite low. The amount of people searching for properties is very low. Um, but in a normal situation, a $250 budget on buyer leads, essentially you should be getting, you know, on the lowest end, 15 leads a month. Um, and on the highest end, 35 leads a month. Um, with that, it really depends on your target areas. Um, and if you're being too specific. So if you're doing just a generalized buyers, for example, Toronto, so buyers Toronto, nothing specific, um, you're hitting around you know, 10 to $12 a lead. If you are um, being more specific, so let's say you wanted to target a Togbeco condos or Togbeco something specific, uh, the more specific you get with your keywords, the higher the cost your click is, when somebody clicks on your ad, which means the cost per lead goes up um, because of that. So um, if it's a generalized search and you've only got free leads, then yes, our support team, they it's not our support team handling it. It is our marketing team that's handling it. So although you're sending it to support, they're sending it to um, Sunny in many cases, who is an expert on all this, and he'll be able to tell you exactly or tweak what's going on and fix whatever it is. Sometimes it, there's all different things that can happen from time to time. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. So basic, please accept my apologies and said that once the team, yes. Yes, absolutely. You should be getting more than three leads a month on a 250 budget. Um, that I can promise you. That I can promise you. Uh, where you might see three leads on a 250 budget is if you're doing sellers right now in certain areas. There's just no sellers out there that are, are really like the, the amount of people online searching for home evaluations has dropped a lot. Um, or if you're trying to do a pre-construction campaign. Pre-construction campaigns, uh, we don't typically do so much anymore because it's hit or miss. You're relying on people searching specifically for that project um, in many cases. And so your leads for pre-construction can range anywhere from $20 you know, to $700 per <laughs> lead. So um, it's, uh, we typically don't do it for that specific reason with that. Yeah, if you guys are contemplating seller leads, I per personally, if it was me, I wouldn't. Um, you know, we, we all want listings. I, I hear you on that one. Um, if personally, I feel like you may be better at doing it through Facebook. I'm running a Facebook sellers campaign if you wanted to go that route. Um, because then it's like visually in front of people, things like that. They feed them right into your system. We're not relying on people going online and searching for that. Um, but your buyers in your system are often sellers, right? So it's it's all about asking the appropriate questions. So we should always be asking them, you know, their current situation. You guys own your home now or are you guys renting? All right. So if they own their home, that's where you're going to dig a little bit deeper, right? Are we, so we're planning on selling in order to make this purchase? Are you guys thinking about, you know, buying as an investment? All right. So the sellers that are out there, um, and consider yourself, right? If you were thinking about making a move um, and you weren't in real estate, because obviously you can do an evaluation on your own home. Um, if you weren't in real estate, the first thing that you typically would do is go online and start looking at listings. You start looking at listings, whether they're the ones in your neighborhood or where you would want to move to, right? So um, they're often already buyer leads in your systems or other systems. So when you're targeting a lot of those seller leads, you're getting less seller leads. Um, and the quality of the lead is no different than a buyer lead, right? So you're gonna get some people that are purely just curious. Um, you'll get some that are just looking for refinancing. Um, and you'll get some, excuse me, that are just purchased something and they wanna make sure they got a good deal. 
Um, and then you will get some that, of course, need evaluations. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, um, but it's always going to be that mixed bag, right? So buyers, you get more bang for your buck and more opportunity with those buyers because a lot of those buyers are also sellers as well. It's just about asking the appropriate questions uh, with that. And come on, how many more questions for me, guys? Uh, Roy is asking, what campaign automate gets ex executed for when a new lead comes first? Um, so Roy, it really depends on your system currently. Um, the new leads, they're being put onto the buying leads. I can tell you which one yours is, is likely, um, is probably not that this one. So this is where anyone that's new that's signing up within, I'm gonna say probably around the last month, um, is on this campaign specifically. It's a longer action plan. If they, if you're prior to this, um, we can definitely switch yours. Um, but one way that you can tell, Roy, is when you go into your system, you'll see auto assign. Okay, so you'll see this below the, the campaign. When you click it, you'll be able to see which campaign the leads are being put on based on, you know, what's the automatic assignment settings for that. Um, so that's one way of telling. If I had to guess, um, for, for many of you guys that, that may be in here that are, are a little bit older, um, longer term clients of ours, you'd be able to see a lot of you guys would be using this one. So this one here was the standard three messages. Uh, one you know, being that first message where you're giving them the, the option to, you know, you're just kind of letting them know. Um, they, most of them, they might have a fourth action as well, which is the opt-out, um, the, the ability for them to reply stop. Some of you will definitely see that message. Um, but some of them here, um, this would be the one that uh, typically you would be assigned to your lead kind of going through. But that's one way you can just find them is just by looking for the one that says, you know, the auto assign like that. And then you can see which campaigns are automatically assigning to your lead in the system. And any more questions, you guys? How many of you guys have actually like gained a conversion, at least one conversion? Um, or at least have somebody that you feel is on the verge of converting. You can, there's a little option there where you can raise your hand uh, if you've had something or you've got a lead where you feel like they're, they're in that, that process where you've either, you know, met them in person and kind of getting the, the process rolling. Um, so we've got Roy in here. Uh, Sabrina says she's got none yet. It's very frustrating. It can definitely be frustrating. Um, I hear you. I hear you on that one. Uh, because we put, we, we often look for things in, in, in many cases, in many different aspects of our life, uh, looking for the instant gratification, right? We get that instant return on our dollar, right? If you buy a pack of gum, you instantly get to eat one. Um, so it's, you know, with the leads, you're putting the money out and we're looking for that return. And so it, it does definitely get frustrating. Uh, one thing to always remember is we can't change somebody's process. Uh, we can't change somebody's timeline or reason to move. All we can do is be there to facilitate it for when it happens. Right? So it is trust in the process. Again, many of your leads are six to 24 months out from transacting. Okay? This is never going to be or has been a get rich quick approach to real estate. Um, if it was, we'd all be doing it. We'd be running our own HGTV shows and what have you. It'd be super simple. We'd all be, you know, driving around Bugatti. Um, but it's not, it's not meant to be simple. And so that's where a lot of individuals definitely get frustrated with the lead process or the leads are garbage or whatever it is. They're not garbage. They're just not ready, right? So it's, it's really discovering where your leads are at in the process 
Um, that's the, the, the foundation of what we should be grabbing. Um, so I always encourage it's the when, the why, the what, and the where. Okay, so as importance, right? So when do they plan on axing their criteria? It's often overlooked so much, so often. Uh, if I look into the system, I can see strong notes, nothing to do with the timeline. Uh, the timeline is gonna be your indication on how often you should be following up with those individuals. Um, and you have to have a strong follow-up plan for yourself and hold yourself accountable to that. Um, we're always so eager to have a conversation with anyone and most individuals, doesn't matter what industry you're in, uh, will drop the ball when it comes to the follow-up. And then they end up missing out on the opportunities because they never followed up. <laughs> they didn't have you know, some sort of system or a plan to be able to do that effectively. Um, and it's just being personable as well, right? So being friendly, relaxed in the conversation. Don't worry about the outcome of your calls. Um, just worry about having great conversations with people, right? It's the people that, and you can, you know, there's, some of us are made out for this. Like I can talk to leads, no problem. I can call them. It's very, just very casual. I've got a work hat on, okay? So how I kind of relate it to is like, if you guys were to meet me in real life, I'm not as outgoing as you might think I am. I've got my work hat on right now. Um, so it's, our personalities can sometimes change and adjust where we need them to be, right? So if you're not normally like this really like, you know, bubbly kind of personality, whatever, well, maybe your work personality is a little bit more bubbly than your regular personality, right? So it's, it's just being, again, relaxed and having fun with it. Um, <clears throat> again, it's like establishing little mini relationships with your leads, and then you're building that relationship through your follow-up. And again, you're trusting the process right? Um, if we figure out when they plan on moving, we know exactly how we should be following up with them. Um, if you ask your lead, so when would be good for me to connect with you again, just to see how everything is. I just want to, you know, I don't want to be bothering you. I just want to make sure everything's good. Um, whatever they tell you, cut it in half. Okay. So if they tell you, yeah, give me a call in about six months or give me a call next year. Uh, if they ask you to call them next year, you give them, a, you're putting them on a six month check-in. If they are asking you to call them in six months, you're following up with the three. Um, they're not going to remember exactly what they told you on the call as to the follow-up. So you can say, hey, Crystal, yeah, I just wanted to reach out, see how everything is. I know you had mentioned just to give you a call in a few months here just to check in on you. You know, the listing's still coming okay. You guys, you know, have any changes or adjustments I should consider for, for your search criteria here? Right. So again, it's just being personable and friendly and customer service forward. Um, these calls can't be transactional calls. They're customer service calls. Um, so Sabrina is asking, how do we send our leads our own listings? Um, so if you want to do it, there's different ways that you can do it naturally. So one, you can create an email. So you can create an email template and include those listings on there so you can in, in you know have an image or you can create a gif you can get fun with it um and so when someone clicks it it brings it into the website onto that listing um so that's one way you can create like unique emails uh, through the email section over here and then create your templates and what have you with respect to that um the other is to pluck listings so if you wanted to um send your lead specific listings so let's say we want to, there's only one here, but that's okay. Um, you have a mass action, so you can send handpick listings, okay? So you can have a thousand people that you've selected and you can send the handpick listings and you're basically adding the filter for MLS, right? So then you're putting the MLS numbers in. Once the MLS numbers are there, you would just select all of your listings and then you can write them a note um, it'll, it'll send them the listings. If you're sending multiple listings to them at once, it's going to, the email formatting will be similar to, uh, here, I'll just show you, um, the similar formatting as to when they've got, there, we'll do that, scroll down, as if they're getting a multitude, like their regular day-to-day. -day. So you would have your little note here, here, check out some of those, those listings there that we might have. Um, and then your little note goes there, and then it's just like the standardized 
email like that. So that's your other way of doing it as well as just doing it that way. Um, or you can get creative with email templates in here. Um, now, when you are, it depends on, and again, you can do that on an individual. So whether you want to do that as a mass action, uh, you can definitely do it as a mass action. You can also do it on an individual lead. So when you have your lead, these are usually all in a row. My Mine is zoomed in a bit. So when you have them all in a row, you can just click on the pick listings. You can hand pluck listings to send to a specific lead in here as well. So you can do the same same idea. Um, so these would be outside of their search that they're getting um, and kind of going from there. Um, so those are just a couple of ways, but you can definitely like the, if you start using GIFs and things like that, um, you know, even just having a play or view now because you can have the type um like the text on the images and stuff so you can get fun and creative with those emails um with you know in those listings and you also have that ability as well with your filters so one thing that i discovered back in my day of being an inside sales rep and, and marketing person for a, a team that had multiple like thousands and thousands of leads in their system was when you're sending a mass email with respect to your listings or, you know, check out this new listing in Whitby, um, it, people don't recognize necessarily that it was a mass email. They think that you sent it specifically to them. And then they start to question, why did you send me this? You know, I'm not looking for a detached home. Um, you know, that's not my price point. And you know, I'm not looking in Whitby. Um, so you can refine who you're sending those to, uh, whether it's open houses or new listings or whatever it might be coming soon. Uh, so with your filters, you do have the buying city, home type, and price. So if you want to specify, okay, the listing that I just have right now is in Toronto. So I only want anyone that has their search targeted towards Toronto. This is who I'm going to send my list of Toronto listings to. Uh, because these guys are looking in Toronto. Now, let's say your listing is a condo, okay? So you can then also do the buying type, right? So I want anyone that's in my system that's looking for a condo. Um, so out of those leads, we now have 21 leads in the system that are currently set up to receive condo listings in Toronto. Um, and then you can even narrow down by price point, right? So if you want anyone that's even above your certain price point. So let's say, you know, list price. Actually, I don't I do it this way. You're buying price. Instead of doing a range, you can do equal to or greater than, right? So if there's search, so let's say your listing is listed at $800,000 for that condo. You could say, you know what? I want everyone that has their cert set above 700,000. Right? So anyone that their search is indicating that they're looking for something more than 700000 you could then see all the leads. Now, this lead is showing up. You can see the minimum 100, but they're still over 700 because the maximum is 800, right? So you can send it out to anyone there that has their searches in the back end that are allocated to more. So you can direct those marketing um, to it. Some people just do it weekly, right? Check out our new listings this week. So sometimes it's just brand recognition of your activities and um, things like that. So everyone's a little bit different as to how they want to market those properties as well. And whether it's just to kind of let them know of everything to potentially stir up some interest. Um, and then sometimes it's like, hey, I got this. Let's see, you guys want to buy it? <laughs> right. So every everything is kind of different. You can use your filters to your advantage. To pull up those those different audiences because again i would get uh, a lot of responses when we started sending even open houses right i would get people that would, would comment back and be like why do i care about the open houses here i'm not looking to buy there All right so they made a valid point so we tweaked the way that we were you know broadcasting these things to be specific to where people were actually looking because that's what's important to them they think that you're deliberately just sending that to them uh, when in fact you're just trying to blast your database. Awesome. Well, that's about it for today. I want to thank you all who popped in, who had some questions. 
if there's any questions that you guys do have uh, that may come to mind, maybe while you're playing around in your system or even just after you're like, oh, shoot, I should ask that question. Uh, just send me an email. I'd be happy to reply to that, that message there um, or jump into your system and see you know, what's going on to better assist you. Um, but thank you all for partaking in today's session. I'm going to just quickly see what we're up to tomorrow or next week. Um, so next week's session, we are actually going into your website. Um, so we've kind of talked a lot about websites right now, or CRMs, I should say. So now we're going to dive into your websites and showcase, you know, some things that you can be doing in there and some of the tools that are available and how you can leverage those tools to help generate yourself free leads. Uh, everyone wants free leads, right? So I hope uh, all of you will take away something from this as well as next week's session. And again, just reach out if you have any questions. See you all soon.